Okay, so here we are at the router OS uh, version 6.41.1 uh, interface to the Microtik CRS uh, 317 10 gigabit switch. Um, as you can see, it's currently running the router OS version, and this particular product from Microtik um, can boot either the router OS um, or the switch OS. And so Today I'm going to uh, attempt to boot into the switch OS. Uh, in, so anyway, let's log in. Uh, according to the instructions, the the uh, well, there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can use the web interface, uh, which is what we're going to do today, um, or you can use the terminal and both. Uh, do the same thing, but let's see uh, how this goes. So you're supposed to go into system and I believe it's router board and then you click on settings and over here boot OS as you can see is currently router OS so I'm going to change that to the switch OS and apply and maybe OK that, OK. So let's Go back in there and just see that, yes, it is indeed uh, changed. So at this point, um, I believe all I need to do is reboot the system. So let's, where is the reboot? Here we are. So let's go ahead and reboot. Okay, so we switched the Microtik CRS317 uh, to boot into the switch OS and this is my first time doing this so I'm learning as I go here um, but basically what happened was that it uh, it rebooted and I, I could hear the fan noise uh, of the switch spin up like it does normally when it's uh, booting up um, but it was no longer accessible on the network uh, at least not at the IP address I had assigned to it. So it seems that the router OS configuration where I had assigned an IP address um, is not shared with the switch OS. So, um, so I let the switch OS boot up and I connected to the, the eth Ethernet boot port and tried to ping um, the 192.168.88.1 default address that uh, was in the documentation and that was unreachable and so I later uh, found a serial cable and if you hear all the noise in the background that's because I'm standing in the back of my rack and I'm uh, connected directly to it right now um, but basically uh, I connected a serial console cable and uh, noticed in the let's see if I actually still have that here yeah so here you'll see this is the serial uh, console output you'll see that uh, it's running switch OS 2.3 and that it's at IP address 192.168.88.2 so this was not something I found anywhere in the documentation I just um, kinda had to figure this out and so we're gonna now that I've figured that one out, I'll move the screen over here. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can go to that address. So 88.2. Okay, so here we are. There's a prompt. Now, considering that it didn't share the IP configuration with router OS, I'm going to assume that this um, has no password. So it's just admin, no passwords, and oh, there we go. So sure enough, um, the switch OS is booting um, but it's in its default configuration in the factory configuration and it is at um, a different IP address so for those of you who are uh, trying to do this for the first time like myself um, just know that when you boot into switch OS it's going to uh, revert to the factory configuration if you don't already have a configuration for it and that its default address is not the dot one but instead dot two 
and so I'm going to go ahead and change the IP address here to what I had assigned to it previously and let's see apply all there's no there's no subnet mask setting here so um, I don't know what to make of that, but let's, I guess, apply all and see what happens. Okay, and of course, it's probably instantaneously changing the IP address, so it won't be reachable anymore at the 88.2 address. Um, yep, so let's take the setup network profile down, and... Um, Change that up. Go to IP4. So let's. I don't know. There's no subnet mask. So let's just do that and save. Quit. Okay, so okay, I am on the dot twenty and um, let's see if we can ping it. Okay, so it's pingable. I'm assuming then that um, I should be able to reach it now. Yes. Okay. So I was able to successfully boot into Switch OS from the router OS. And along the way, uh, there was a couple of things I learned. So I just want to summarize that before I close out the video here. So the first thing is that router OS and Switch OS do not share any configuration. And so if you you know, configure an IP address, set up an account, uh, you know, various, you know, basic configuration settings for router OS that, you know, you might uh, think would be shared with the switch OS. Uh, that's not the case. So when you boot into switch OS for the first time, uh, it's going to default uh, to the factory configuration. And I guess the second point to follow on with that is that the, the default IP address for switch OS is not the same as the default IP address for router OS, which um, is 192.168.88.1, and that's what is uh, <clears throat> specified in the documentation. But it turns out, um, based on, as you saw earlier in the video, looking at the output from the console port that the switch OS default IP is actually 192.168.88.2. So that's probably uh, very useful to know uh, if you're booting into switch OS for the first time and trying to connect to it over the network. Now, one final thing, if you noticed in the video when I was assigning an IP address to switch OS, uh, I was a little bit confused uh, at one point where you can enter an IP address, but there's no uh, field to enter a subnet mask or a default gateway. And, and so I did a little bit more reading on Microtik's website about this, and, and they have a, a page um, describing the details of SwitchOS, and, and it specifically mentions this, this issue, uh, or this topic, I guess, is not really an issue, um, is that SwitchOS has some mechanism built in where it will figure out how to communicate to another device uh, without the subnet mask or default gateway. Uh, I can see how that would work on something that's in the local LAN or local broadcast domain. Um, how it figures out how to communicate to a device that you know is say beyond a router or on another subnet on another uh, that has traversed a, a router. Um, I'm not really sure how it figures out how to do that. Um, you know, if it's just replying to something, talking to it, sure, that's possible. But if it's trying to reach out to a, an IP address that it doesn't know, I would think it would need to figure out how to forward it to some router that will 
uh, you know, forward that packet to the appropriate destination. But anyway, uh, you know, that's going to be interesting to see how that works because uh, in, in, a, in the next video or at some point in the future, I, I'm going to update the SwitchOS uh, version. The, the one that it was included, uh, you know, with the device out of the box is a little bit old and has an issue with the the uh, the fan uh, control mechanism. So it, it doesn't um, it doesn't actually uh, turn off the fans when the temperature is below the threshold, and so you'll have a very loud switch. Um, which was you know one of the reasons why I bought this switch was because. Uh, I had heard it could be operated very quietly and and the fans would would only turn on uh, when a certain temperature threshold was was reached and so I believe the latest version of switch OS uh, does uh, fix that problem and so I will definitely be doing that uh, upgrade at some point and and I'll create another video for for that so anyway that's uh that's it for now i hope that you guys are finding this uh these videos useful about the microtix crs 317 um if there's any particular request uh for you know configuring this or that or something like that please uh leave, leave me a message in the comments and uh you know if if possible i i will create a, a video to go over some of those type of configuration settings and so on. So anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.